Eyewitness News. This is 13 Investigates. And it's one of the state's proudest traditions, but tonight you may be surprised to learn what happens behind the scenes at the Indiana State Fair. Well, 13 Investigates has discovered some of the fair's biggest prize winners are being stripped of their prizes and banned from future competition. Our senior investigative reporter Bob Siegel shows you how they're getting caught, why they're being punished, and how the problem could impact the food on your table. When you think of the Indiana State Fair, these are some of the images that probably come to mind. But 13 Investigates is going to show you what you don't get to see at the fair. It's a darker side that's been happening for years. It's everywhere. People do it all the time because they win. They cheat and they win. We're not showing you this teenager's face because, well, her parents asked us not to. She's still trying to get over what happened at last year's Indiana State Fair. She and four other winners were all stripped of their titles because their sheep failed drug tests. That's right. The top five lambs at the 2014 Indiana State Fair all disqualified. More than $20,000 in prize money lost. And the contestants, all of them banned from state fair competition for the next two years. I was pretty upset. I was crying. It was just shocking. I didn't really know what to think. None of it was announced during the fair. Well, because nobody knew. Winning animals give a urine sample for testing, but that doesn't get tested until weeks later. That's when toxicologists at this Purdue laboratory detected the drugs. Drugs that can make show lambs look better by adding muscle tone or hiding wrinkles. Drugs that aren't approved for sheep at all. Any time that, uh, that we're judging sheep shows, bigger certainly is better. Terry Knudsen owns Viking Lamb. At this farm in Shelby County, he raises sheep for some of the finest restaurants in the Midwest and for kids to show his 4-H projects. He says the most recent test results at the state fair are scary for the sheep industry. My biggest fear is that what happens if those lambs go into the food chain? Most sheep, cattle and pigs shown at fairs do end up in the food chain and on someone's dinner plate. And that's why drug residues are a big concern for the people who run Indiana's 4-H program. It is both frustrating and disappointing. We're talking about young people here, minors. Whether they realize it or not, they're one or two animals entering a food chain um, does have the potential to impact not only the food chain, but also the larger livestock industry. People know if they get caught, there will be uh, punishment but it hasn't seemed to matter. Since 2011, the Indiana State Fair has disqualified 41 contestants because their animals fail drug tests. It's a small percentage, but still a big concern. Certainly we have the penalties in place to try to uh, discourage um, these actions from happening. Dr. Jim Weissman is a veterinarian and a State Fair board member. He says the fair's drug testing program addresses what's actually a nationwide problem. Nationally, this is happening at major shows across the country. He's right. 13 investigates collected information from state fairs and livestock expositions all over the nation. Like Indiana, other states say they too disqualified recent winners for failed drug tests. <laughs> And many shows, including county fairs all across the country, do little or no drug testing at all. So those willing to bend the rules often face no consequences. Despite all that, it's important to point out again, the vast majority of kids who show animals at 4-H events do play by the rules. So the question is, at the biggest events, why are some of the biggest winners getting busted? I really can't say why it's happening. We don't know. Fair officials can't say for sure why animals are getting drugs they shouldn't be getting. But there's a leading theory on why some contestants are doing it. They want to win. To win. Everybody likes to win. Clipping, shaving, even painting. Making these animals look their best for the judges is critical. Competition is fierce, and the stakes are high. Wherever there's an incentive for financial reward, you're going to have people that are willing to push the boundaries and, and, and find the competitive advantage. 
for some families, finding an advantage starts early in the springtime. At an auction like this, where families choose the animals they'll show at the state fair. We've got people here from coast to coast and border to border. These are the elite of the elite of animals throughout the United States. Just how elite? Well, wait till you hear how much some of these sheep cost. Last night, we had the opportunity to sell a $22,000 lamb for a project. Help me understand $22,000 for a sheep for a 4-H project. Sometimes that can be hard to understand. You kind of got to put it as, as, as comparing it to a boat or a baseball bat for a young man to go play Little League Baseball. You're making an investment in your kids and, and your family. It's an investment that over time can pay dividends. With women Winners earning $3,000, $6,000, even $10,000 for a champion at the state fair. And at national shows like this one in Fort Worth, a winning animal can fetch nearly a quarter million dollars. Easy to see why some contestants could get carried away. You know, when you're dealing with that much money and you're dealing with that much pride and competition, some families will step out a little too far. But this teenager and her father insist that's not what happened to their family. Were you cheating? No, I wasn't, but I know there's people out there that do it just to win. Any idea how that drug might have gotten into the sheep? No. Neither does her father. We actually had to do Google search on the drug to see what it was because we had no idea what it was. We still haven't figured out where it came from. Where it came from and whether it was an accident, well, that doesn't even matter, at least not to the people who run the state fair. How a substance arrived in an animal is irrelevant at the point that we find it. They say the focus of 4-H is and always has been on education. And that's meant to avoid situations like this. I can't show for two years now. I know it didn't just like affect me, it like affected my whole family. With another state fair just days away, state officials point out the drug testing program isn't going anywhere. Our job is to keep a fair playing field. It's for the protection of what we eat on a daily basis with our families. It's also protecting a state institution and a multi-billion dollar industry from those who don't follow the rules. We don't want black eyes. It has to stop. It has to stop. There's no room for it. The Indiana State Fair now tells me it's going to do things differently. Instead of waiting weeks after the fair to run drug tests on winning animals, those tests will now be sent to the lab right away. That'll help identify drugged animals before the fair's big awards ceremony and before those animals are likely to be eaten. 4-H leaders hope more attention on this issue will bring more awareness, more education, and more confidence in our food supply. But they still worry about where some of these animals are coming from. We have more on that part of the story at WTHR.com.